there's one thing that can tie a knitter or crocheter up in knots, and that is confusing pattern instructions. And possibly the most misunderstood thing about the way patterns are written is the way we describe pattern repeats or repeated sections within a pattern. There are some commonly accepted ways of describing repeated sections in a pattern. If you don't understand this conventional pattern speak, then you might be confused. But what's worse is even if you understand it, the person writing the pattern may not understand it, which can just add to the confusion. This happens in both knitting and crochet patterns, and I'm going to show you examples of both. You might see an instruction in a pattern that looks like this. As an experienced crafter, I have got to say, this wording drives me absolutely crazy. How many times am I supposed to do knit four, purl six, or single crochet in next stitch, double crochet in next two stitches? From experience, I think the pattern writer intends for me to do that repeated sequence of stitches, the knit four, purl six, or the single crochet in next stitch, double crochet in next two stitches, a total of five times. But that's not what the pattern says. Let's take a minute to talk about brackets and parentheses. We use brackets or parentheses to group a sequence of stitches together and tell how many times to do that sequence, like they do here. These patterns are telling you to knit four purl six five times, or to single crochet and next stitch, double crochet and next two stitches five times. We can use asterisks to show a point of repeat, and these are usually used together with repeat from asterisk to show the full repeated section. In these examples, we've got the knit four, purl six, repeat from asterisk four times, knit four, or the single crochet and next stitch, double crochet and next two stitches, repeat from asterisk four times, showing that we go back to that asterisk and work from that point. If you look at it, it seems that the number of times to work that sequence has gone down. This time it's saying four times, not five times. Actually, these all say exactly the same thing. How is that possible? Well, in the asterisk examples, you are doing the sequence of stitches once, and then you're repeating that sequence four more times for a total of five times. You can't repeat something you haven't done before. There's another point of confusion that happens with asterisks. Sometimes you'll see asterisks used this way where you have the asterisks sort of used in place of the brackets or the parentheses to enclose the repeated section. And then it tells you to repeat between the asterisks a certain number of times, or work a certain number of times. As an experienced pattern writer, I like to steer clear of this construction. I think it's too many asterisks. It makes me see stars before my eyes. I like to use the single asterisk and repeat from asterisk because I think it's easier for the eye to track. However, if you do see this between asterisks construction, pay careful attention to the wording used to make sure you are following the repeats correctly. Let's go back to our original confusing instruction. The repeat from asterisk a total of five times. Can you see the contradictions? If you repeat the sequence of stitches a total of five times, you've done the sequence a total of six times. But if you do the sequence a total of five times, you've only repeated them four times you're going to have to use clues to figure out what the pattern designer meant. In the knitting example, if you have 54 stitches on the needle, you can work the knit four, purl six sequence five times, which will use 50 stitches, then knit the last four stitches for a total of 54 stitches. 
Or if you have 64 stitches, you'll work the knit four purl six sequence once, then repeat it five times, then knit the last four stitches using up all 64 stitches. The crochet example is harder to figure out because the row ends with double crochet in each stitch to end. That leaves the total number of stitches you're working with unknown. However, when you're working the pattern, you're going to know how many stitches you have, and you'll have a good idea of whether the pattern is worked all the way across the row or around the round. You can use this information to figure out what balances the stitch pattern and how many repeats you can fit across the stitches you have available, and then go with that. You see what I mean? This is what I call the repeat paradox. Repeat a total of some number of times is not ideal wording. Luckily, there's an easy solution that clears up most of this confusion, and that is the word more. If you add the word more into these instructions, it now makes sense. See how easy that is? It reminds you that you are doing the thing once and then repeating it a certain number of times. Even if the word more isn't included in the instructions, now that you understand how repeats work and the nuances of this wording, you should be able to figure out for yourself when you have a confusing instruction. Let's spread the word that you can't repeat something you haven't done at least once before and help clear up the confusion in knitting and crochet patterns. If you'd like more instruction like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out the links in the video notes for other ways you can find me. Thanks for watching.